you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Virginia. Did anybody last night watch a thing called the debate? That was a big one. But as you saw on television last night, we had a big victory against a man that really is looking to destroy our country. He's the worst. He's the most corrupt, the most incompetent president in the history of our country. And we have to take it back from that party. That's an evil party, despite the fact that crooked Joe Biden spent the entire week at Camp David resting, working, studying. He studied very hard. He studied so hard that he didn't know what the hell he was doing. He got the debate rules that he wanted. He got the date that he wanted. He got the network that he wanted with the moderates he wanted. No amount of rest or rigging could help him defend his atrocious record. It's not defensible. I don't care who you were. You could be the late, great Clarence Darrow. Has anyone ever heard of Clarence Darrow? He was known as quite a good debater. Not as good as your governor, but that's okay. Hello, governor. I can't miss this guy in the crowd. But his son's much better looking than him. Joe Biden's problem is not his age. It's not his anything, really. It's got no problem other than it's his competence. He's grossly incompetent. You know, they keep saying old. I know people that are much older than him that are doing unbelievable things, making a fortune. I knew a man that at 79, he was never a success, and he made a billion, billion and a half dollars from 79 to 92. And that's what it is. It's not his age. It's his competence. He's not respected anywhere in the world. Our country is being laughed at all over the world. Biden is using the weaponization of his Justice Department, the FBI, local district attorneys and attorneys general to try and win an election against his political opponent. That happens to be me. Do you know who I am? Something that actually was unthinkable in our nation but which is very common in third world countries or in banana republics. That's what he's doing. He's using law enforcement to try and hurt his political opponent. Every one of those things last night, you saw that, was all started by this guy, this crooked guy. And uh, not only I crooked, I mean, just so bad in so many ways. He's killing our country. He's incapable of winning based on his far left policies of open borders, massive tax increases, the Green News scam. That's a windmill on every corner, most of which don't work. And things like putting men in women's sports, really not a great idea. As, as every American saw firsthand last night, this election is a choice between strength and weakness, competence and incompetence, peace and prosperity, or war or no war. They like a war. They love wars. You know, they love killing people. It's so wonderful. You know, I'm the only president in many, many decades that didn't start a war. I finished one. I beat ISIS in record time. As soon as I left, we had the uh, situation where Russia went into Ukraine. They would have never done that. And where Israel's attacked. And then we had inflation. And then we had that horrible horrible event that took place in Afghanistan, the worst, I think the most embarrassing moment in the history of our country. And it's a choice, though, between a president who puts America first or a train wreck who puts America last. They put America last. Actually, the Democrats put America last. You take a look at that. Look at a guy like Senator Schumer. I've always known him. I've known him a long time. I come from New York. I knew Schumer. He's, he's become a Palestinian. He's a Palestinian now. Congratulations. He was very loyal to Israel and to Jewish people. He's Jewish, but he's become a Palestinian because they have a couple of more votes or something. Nobody's quite figured it out. A vote for Joe Biden is a vote for failure, surrender, and disaster for our country. A vote for your all-time favorite president, President Donald J. Trump.
is a vote for stopping Joe Biden's inflation, stopping the border invasion, and very simply making America great again. It will make America great again. You see these beautiful women? I'm not allowed to use the term beautiful as a politician. In fact, it could be the end of my career. If Glenn ever ran against me, he'd say he called women beautiful, and that could be the end of my career. But they're beautiful. What am I going to do? I can't lie. But you see these beautiful women up here? They come from a place called North Carolina. We all love North Carolina. And this is their 127th rally. And it's hard to believe. I seldom see their husbands, their husbands, but they're happily married. I said, are you all happily married? They love their husbands. You love your husbands? They put up with a lot, huh? No, they're very happily married women, but it's 127. But I'll tell you, Front Row Joes even have that. They're about 200 and something, right? They must have made a lot of money somewhere along the, along the line. Do my people treat you good? Huh? They better treat you good. Front Row Joes, they become very famous. The question every voter should be asking themselves today is not whether Joe Biden can survive a 90-minute debate performance, but whether America can survive four more years of crooked Joe Biden in the White House. In fact, I don't know if we can really survive five more months. This is the most dangerous time in the history of our country, in my opinion, and we have a transition period because hopefully there has to be a transition. We've never been so close to World War III before, and if it happens, it will be a war like no other. This because of the threat of certain types of weapons. We don't even want to mention the word, but because of the type of weapons that you're talking about today, and I know them better than anybody. You know, I built our military. I, re I totally rebuilt our military. I know more about weapons than just about anybody. And when you look at the incredible destructive power of these weapons, this will be a war like no other. This will not be two army tanks running against each other and shooting. This is going to be something the likes of which we've never seen. And a man who's grossly incompetent heading up our nation. And he's competing against Putin and President Xi of China and Kim Jong-un of North Korea. He's competing against people that are at the top of their game. And he was never really at the top of his game. He was never very good. But now he's really not good. Last night was a defeat not only for Biden, but for the entire radical left Democrat Party and the fake news media who have been lying to the American people as our country was being destroyed. The fake news media, look at all of them back there. Look at all of them. That's a lot of cameras. That's a lot of cameras. That's a lot of camera power. The Joe Biden on stage yesterday was the same Joe Biden who gave us open borders, crushing inflation, rampant crime, two new wars, a disastrous Afghanistan embarrassment, most embarrassing moment in the history of our country, and the international humiliation. Think of it, one after another, international humiliation one after another nobody respects him foreign leaders don't respect him you know we put up 124 billion dollars more given to ukraine than europe now europe is a lot closer we have a thing called the notion in between us right so no matter how you cut it it's got to be more important why is it that we're not equalized why is it that they put up 124 billion dollars our people these people in washington that don't know what the hell they're doing you know i stopped it with nato uh, we were spending almost 100 percent of the money for nato and i went in my first meeting i realized i said you know they're not paying their bills they're delinquent my second meeting i said you got to pay and they said well what would happen if we don't then we won't defend you against russia and the next day money came in by the billions you never saw money come in so fast glenn the money was pouring in. And I took a lot of heat, Michael, on his Mike Waltz. I took, he knows better than anybody on this subject. He's the all time. He's the all time. But am I right? The money came in like at a level that was never seen. Hundreds of billions of dollars poured in. And then I took heat from the press because they said, no, I will not defend you if you're not current. 
And they said, well, that's not very nice. I said, it's not nice. Now, if I said I will, they wouldn't have paid, right? I suspect. But I took a lot of heat. But the fact is, the uh, Secretary General called it the greatest. He's never seen anything like it because Bush would come and make a speech and leave. Obama would come and make a speech and leave. And then uh, I came in and I didn't make a speech. I just said, these guys aren't paying their bills. They're not paying their bills. I don't want to make a speech until they pay their bills. But they asked me, will you defend us if we don't pay? I said, no, I will not defend you. We're not stupid anymore. And $400 billion came pouring in. You never saw money pouring in so fast. The whole world should know that while Biden is the worst president in the history of America, our country is going to be strong again, and it's going to be very soon. I want the enemies to know that because we have a five-month transition period. And I want the enemies to know, don't play around with us during this five-month period. Don't play around. It's only for them. It's also from, in all fairness, we have enemies on the outside, China, Russia, North Korea, enemies. But they're not really enemies if you have a smart president. If you have a smart president, they're not enemies. You'll make them do great. We had no problems. China paid us hundreds of billions of dollars, hundreds of billions of dollars. And it was so because they respected our country. Thank you very much. He said they respected you. Thank you. Stand up, please. Who said that? Stand up. Because they respected us. You said it better than I could. <laughs> Thank you. I plagiarized. Thank you. No, they respect us. There was no games. But we have the enemy on the outside, and you can do great things with them. And then we have a worse enemy. I call it the enemy from within. These are the sick people, the socialists. Remember I said... America will never be a socialist country. I was right. I was right. It skipped over socialism, went directly into fascism and communism. It never stopped at the station called socialism. It went worse. And that's a big problem that we have. But I think you're starting to see the end of that. And it's been starting for a while now with us. But I think last night was a big moment for people with common sense that want to see America be great again, want to put America first. Many people are saying that after last night's performance that Joe Biden is leaving the race. But the fact is, I don't really believe that because he does better in polls than any of the Democrats they're talking about. You've seen that, Glenn. These polls come out with some of the names they're being, like Gavin Newsom. He can't run California. He's one of the worst governors. No, he's a bad governor. He can't run. Uh, he can't run California. People are leaving one of the most beautiful places on earth. In terms of weather, in terms of everything else, you can't do any better than California. He's doing a terrible job. But he gets up and he says, "Oh, California's doing great." Pa 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 pa, like a machine gun. Pa 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 pa. But it's doing bad. People are leaving so fast, and he's he'd be easy. But he uh, he's got lousy poll numbers, and uh, you take a look at some of the others. Then, of course. Kamala is somebody that will be on the scope. It might have been Joe Biden's single best decision, putting her as vice president. Might have been his best because nobody wants that. I do. I'd be very happy with that. But they don't poll as well as this guy. I mean, I don't want to speak against myself, but maybe. Uh, and they polled everybody. They polled Michelle Obama. She polls very badly. No, she polls terribly. Michelle Obama, people, you know, they, they polled many people. And it's hard to believe, but crooked Joe Biden polls better than those people. So I don't know what's going to happen. I have absolutely no idea. I just know that we're going to make America great again. That's a good looking group back there. Better looking, better looking than front row Joe's. You know what happens? You think they don't have a good seat. They actually have the best seat because oftentimes the cameras are on them. The cameras aren't on you. 
And I'm making a speech and have all this stuff. It's all over the world. And a lot of them get picked. Would you like to come to Hollywood? A lot of, you'd be amazed how many people. They see some of these beautiful faces and they say, let's move them to Hollywood. They have the best seat. They don't know it, but they do. Okay, I don't want to point to too many of them. Get myself in trouble. But remember, the biggest problem for our country is not Joe Biden's personal decline. It's that Joe Biden's policies are causing America's decline at a level that we've never seen before. That's why this November, the people of Virginia and the people of America are going to tell crooked Joe Biden, Biden, you're fired. Get out of here. You're fired. Get out. We don't want you. You've been the worst president in the history of our country. We don't want you. Get the hell out of here. But we don't just need to fire Biden. As you saw yesterday, the whole Democrat Party deserves to be voted out of office. You have some great people. You have some great people in this state. And the reason I'm honored to be with you, Governor, who's here, just made a really fantastic speech. I saw it coming in. I'm flying in on my plane. I'm watching him speak. I said, what a beautiful crowd that is. But uh, he just made a great speech because what he says turns out to be right. He's got common sense. He's got great policy. He's got the policy that made America great. Now America is in decline because they have people that are going against those basic policies. But he's got the policy that made America great. And I'll call him up. I just said to him, do you want to come up? I know you just spoke for 45 minutes. Do you want to come up? And I said, come on up. You know, so he's going to come up in a couple of seconds. As far as I'm concerned, he can say it all again. He can say it all again. But we're proud of him. He's done a he's done a great job. Time and again, Joe Biden revealed how extreme and divisive the radical left Democrats have become. Before your very eyes, crooked Joe endorsed unlimited extreme late term abortion up to the moment of birth. And even after the think of this and even death after a baby is born. And I always am very clear about this when I say the governor of Virginia, I always go back and say the former governor, because you don't want to be tied into this. But the former governor, that was, I call him Michael Jackson, remember? His wife saved him. He was going to moonwalk. He was trying to say why he wore blackface, and he was going to moonwalk across the stage. And that's when his wife finally put down her foot, don't do it, don't do it. Because you're already destroyed us, you've destroyed us, don't do it. Remember she stopped him because nobody can moonwalk like Michael Jackson, the greatest people. Are. So this would not have been a pretty scene. But he said uh, that, and you can see it, I mean, they have tapes on it. He said, uh, the baby is born, yes, the baby is born, and then we make a decision on what to do with the baby. And there's some states that allow that, it's not even believable. But he, uh, think of that. But Biden celebrates throwing his political opponents in jail. He bragged about surrendering our energy independence and all of the other things that he's done in favor of China and India and other countries. And he claimed that the strength of our economy comes not from hardworking Americans, but from illegal aliens, where almost all of our new jobs have gone to illegal aliens. You know that? And... Just remember I said this because this is a disaster waiting to happen. You know, we're doing very well with the black and Hispanic vote. We're doing very well with the union vote. Like record numbers, because we've done a lot. We've done criminal justice reform. We've done, we've saved the historically black colleges and universities. Uh, we had great economic development programs with Tim Scott. Opportunity Zones, it's called. It's probably the most successful opportunity. I mean, it's the most incredible thing. And that's gone largely to black, Hispanic people. It's been great. So we've done a lot. But, you know, the worst thing that's happening to black, number one, Hispanic, number two, unions, number three, is the millions of people pouring into our country. They're taking their jobs and they're taking the 
black jobs, people that have had their jobs for a long time are losing their jobs, and Hispanic jobs, people that have had them for a long time, they're losing their jobs. And you know who else is the biggest loser is going to be the unions. The unions, like the Teamsters, I have such respect for Sean. He's the head of the Teamsters. I don't want to throw around names, but he's a good man. And I don't know. I think, you know, we're at 89% approval within the Teamsters union. And I think I use Teamsters when I build buildings in Manhattan. They do unbelievable. They take the concrete trucks and there's nobody can wheel a truck. These guys are incredible. And, you know, maybe we get lucky. Maybe somebody's smart, you know, when they have... 89% approval, and then they endorse because for 50 years they endorse automatically. It's almost like automatic. They endorse the Democrat, but I think maybe the Teamsters go with us. You know, when you have a vast majority on your side, and then the person that did it, Hoffa, did it last time, and he ended up getting sort of thrown out of the union. But uh, I think they have some good leadership. I think a lot of unions are coming our way, but. These millions and millions of people that are coming from prisons, coming from prisons and jails. You know, there is a slight difference, okay? They're coming from prisons and jails, mental institutions, and insane asylums like Silence of the Lamb. The press always says, why does he ramble about Sil Silence of the Lamb? The late, great Hannibal Lecter, he'd like to have you over for dinner. Did you ever? Don't do it. If he suggests, I'd like to have you for dinner, don't go. But these are the people, these are the people that are coming into our country and they're coming in at numbers that nobody can believe. Venezuela has its lowest crime rate in 30 years because they're taking their gang members and they're dropping them into Virginia. But you have a governor that's not letting them stay very long. Right? But Joe Biden and the Democrats know this, but they're unwilling to do for whatever reason. I don't understand for whatever, you know, you always like to understand your, the other side or your opponent's reasoning. Why would somebody want open borders? Why would somebody want men playing in women's sports? Why would somebody want 100% electric vehicles and they don't go far? They're too expensive. And you know what? They have a place. Elon is a friend of mine. He probably doesn't like me too much with what I say, but they have a, a great place for a certain application. But you don't want 100 percent. They've made so many. They've spent trillions of dollars on subsidies. You ever notice that the car companies aren't selling cars, but they seem to be very happy. You know why? Because they're getting massive amounts of subsidy from the government. Normally, they'd all be out of business because they're not selling cars. They're making far more electric vehicles than you need. But they do have a place. They have a great place. But it's 9 percent, 7 percent, 8 percent. You have hundreds of thousands of unsold cars. This would be a great time for you to go buy an electric vehicle. But the car companies normally would be losing their share. But this stupid, stupid, stupid man that we have is giving massive subsidies. He's given massive subsidies to windmills all over the country that are ruining our beautiful plains, our beautiful land, our beautiful oceans. Whales aren't exactly in love with them. How about in New Jersey? where they had one whale in 50 years that washed up to shore, and last year they had 18. Would you say there's something going on, little? They had one whale in 50 years, last year they had 18, that's a lot, and happening more. It does something to them, it drives them crazy. Joe Biden's radical left Democrat party is now the party of open borders, massive tax hikes, the destruction of social security. They are destroying your social security because these millions of people are coming in. They're giving them social security. Do you believe this? They're destroying it. They're the party of endless wars, weaponization of law enforcement, lies, hoaxes, and corruption. They're corrupt people. The Republican Party is now the party for all Americans because the Republican Party is the party of common sense. Common sense. And in the wake of all these Biden disasters, it's time for our country to finally come together so that our whole nation can win together once again. We're going to win together. We're going to bring our country together with success. Our country, pre-COVID, we had a country that was rocking and rolling like no country in the history of the world. And everybody wanted to come together. It was going to unify. I was getting calls from people that I would have said were radical left.
serious radical left Democrats. They wanted to come. They wanted to have lunch. And then we got the gift from China, COVID, the China virus, as we more accurately call it. And uh, we did a great job. You know, we were recognized for doing great economy. We started no wars. We rebuilt our military. We got the greatest tax cuts in history, greater than the Reagan tax cuts many years before. The greatest, uh, we had the greatest cuts in regulation of any country, of any country and of this country. Nobody has even come within, within 25, 30% of what we did. We cut regulations at a level that nobody ever saw before. And you know, when I went to the big companies and the small companies and I'd say, which was more important, the biggest tax cuts in history or the biggest regulation cuts in history? I have never heard one person say the tax cuts. They'd say the regulation cuts were more important. People couldn't build. They couldn't do anything. They were just stagnated. We had a case in Louisiana where the, an LNG plant, it was stuck in 14 years of traffic. They couldn't get their environmental permits. I got them in one day when I came into office, one day. And they built, they built a $15 billion. This is a 15, this is like three empire state buildings rolled over and put together, this was the longest thing I've ever seen, made up of like all pipes, and I said, what the hell? But it was a $15 billion project, and they couldn't get it done. I got it done in one day. I took all the things, I said, let's get it done. And then we got two of the other ones done, and they're doing unbelievable business. And it was foreign money being poured into the United States. They would have never gotten it approved. And we have many such plants, different types, plants will never get approved and all they do is produce good things for us and lots of jobs and in virginia we're doing that too we're working with your government to get a lot of things approved that you thought would never happen and we'll get them done very very quickly but with these guys you'll never get them done you'll never get them done they don't have any clue all they know is electric they want electric army tanks they want electric planes what happens if the sun isn't shining while you're up in the air well, sir, those, you know, they, I told you there'd be problems, sir. No, they want electric everything, everything. They want electric boats. The problem, the boats, they, they don't float because the battery is so heavy, it sinks the boat. They say, we don't care. We want them anyway. Whether you're a Democrat or Republican, young or old, black, brown or white, we welcome you to our movement and ask for your help and your partnership in making America. The strongest, most magnificent country again anywhere in the world. As I said last night, I'm not in this race for me. I'm in this race for the sake of our country. You know, I told them last night, I wish you were a great president. I wouldn't even be here. I wouldn't have been indicted more than Al Capone. Al Capone was indicted one time. He was a killer. If he took you, see the guy standing up? Say that guy, I don't know who the hell he is, but if Al Capone took him to dinner, he'd say he's so obnoxious, kill him. He's be... He'd say kill him. He'd be dead, but... and then the cops were afraid to investigate him. They'd say, Al Capone did it? I, I, I'm not interested in looking at that. He'd be at the bottom of a foundation of a nice big building. And I got indicted more than Alphonse Capone, Scarface. Can you believe it? And it's all been because of Biden. But I said to him, I wish you were the greatest president because I wouldn't have run. I wouldn't have done this. I wouldn't look, it was rigged. The election was totally rigged, but I wouldn't have run. If he were if he were a great president, I'd say, you know what, if he's doing a great job, that's so important. I wouldn't have run. And I wouldn't have been going through all this stuff. I would but I wouldn't be here with you and I'm enjoying this. This is better than sitting home watching television. This is much better. This is better than being on some magnificent island that I own and enjoying the fruits of life. This is much better standing out here in 100 degree weather. Global warming. Every time it turns a little slightly warm, it's global warming. It's global. The planet is going to hell. What about those people that used to say we have 12 years, 12 years, in which case we're all gone. That ended about five years ago. We, we keep waiting. No, the, uh, he said last night, you know, he loves his word. It's an existential threat, existential. He has no idea what the hell the word means. I was going to ask him. But he said it again last night that global warming is an existential threat. And I say that 
The thing that's an existential threat is not global warming, where the ocean will rise, maybe, and it may go down also, but it may rise one-eighth of an inch in the next 497 years, they say. One-eighth, which gives you a little bit more waterfront property, if you're lucky enough to own. No, that's not the threat. You know what the threat is? That's the threat, Joe Biden. That's the threat. Now, the threat is weaponry. The threat is nuclear weapons, okay? The threat is nuclear warming. That can happen tomorrow. We have six countries out there with massive nuclear capability. He doesn't mention it. You know, I, I watch these people talking about global warming, and they don't use that now. They use climate change because global warming was no good because it was actually getting cooler. So they used to have in, 19, in the 1920s, you know, they thought the planet was going to freeze. They had a thing, global cooling. They had a picture, I think it was on Time magazine, of the Earth, very cool. In the 1920s, it was a global cooling thing. But now they use it, got smart. It's climate change. Because climate change, cover, if it goes warm, it's good. If it goes cool, it doesn't matter what it means. If it snows, if you have more tornadoes or less tornadoes. You know, I read about some bad tornadoes, and we do have bad tornadoes. But the worst tornado was in 1987. The worst tornado was in the 1800s. Eight, they say 1857 ripped the hell out of the country. In 1893, we had a series of tornadoes that made these look like babies. Now, that's only reporting, you know, who knows, but they were very serious. It's cold weather. The risk is weaponry. The risk is nuclear warming. And we have to be careful. And we need our smartest people to head this up. My uncle was a professor at MIT, the longest serving professor in the history of MIT, Dr. John Trump. And Dr. John Trump told me many years ago, I was a little boy, just like that beautiful kid over there. I wasn't as good looking as him, but other than that, but I was the same age. And you know what? Uh, they told me, he told me, I said, what do you mean, Uncle John? No, someday he knew nuclear better than anybody. You know, when he graduated from MIT, they said, would you do us a favor? What, become a professor? And because he was so smart. And he said, uh, well, I'd like to think about it, but he did. And he was there for 41 years. He's the longest serving professor in the history of MIT. He used to tell me about nuclear many years ago when I was a little boy. He said, someday you'll have a bomb that can do destruction, the likes of which nobody can even imagine. And I won't tell you what he said in terms of the power, but he would say just that. And then he'd go into some more details. And I said, no way, Uncle John. No way. No, I said, yes, yes, that will be. And he was very worried about it. That's your threat, and we don't even talk about it. We never even met. Can you imagine this guy saying global warming is the greatest threat to our country? Global warming is fine. In fact, I heard it was going to be very warm today. It's fine. It's fine. I believe that, and we were united. I'll tell you, during that period of time, just prior to COVID coming in, I was with Tony Fabrizio and John McLaughlin, two of the great pollsters, and there are good pollsters, you know. We have a lot of fake pollsters, like we have a lot of fake news. They are fake news in a sense. But by the way, did you see we had a poll last week, Rasmussen, which is a good poll. That's only good because I like them. You know, they happen to be good. If they were bad like two months from now, I'd say they're terrible. But the Rasmussen poll is a big deal. It's a really good poll, and they have us up 10 points on this guy, 10 points. That's pretty good. And a friend of mine who's very smart, but he's not really into politics, he said, could I ask you a question? Why is 10 points good? You mean he's going to get 40 points? I said, you have to understand, the Democrats basically get 40 points. It doesn't matter if this lectern was running for office, it would get 40. Actually, Joe, that's true. It would, they get 40 automatically. The Republicans have to do it the old-fashioned way. We have to earn it. We have to do like in 2016. We have to do really like 2020. You know, we got many millions of more votes in 2020 than we got in 2016. We did actually much better. But it was rigged. What are you going to do? But you know what? We're not going to let that happen again. We're not letting that happen. They used COVID to cheat. They did everything possible to cheat. And Hillary Clinton said, why didn't you do that to me? Why didn't you find those votes for me like you found for Sleepy Joe or Crooked Joe? Ready? Paul. Paul. What's a better name? Well, I go Crooked Joe first and then Crooked Joe Biden or Sleepy Joe Biden. Ready? Crooked Joe first. Who likes Crooked Joe Biden first? Okay. 
Who likes sleepy Joe Biden? Similar. Similar. Okay, let's sit here. Crooked Joe Biden. Sleepy Joe Biden. Crooked. Crooked. The other time, last week I did that. You know, I like saving money. You go to these pollsters, they interview. I don't even think they interview them. I want to know the truth. I think they just say they interview them because they make money. I don't even think they interview them. But they say they interview like 243 people and they tell you what's going to happen with the race, right? And then they want to charge you half a million bucks. Politicians know this. And I come to these rallies and I do my own polls. I have, we have 25,000 people or something here today. I get a free poll. It's a free poll. Okay, here's another one. Who likes Governor Glenn Youngkin? That's, that's the end of that. I don't know who to put against him because there's nobody going to win. Anyway, well, you're right. But we're, uh, we were a truly united country, and I believe that we can be a very great country again. It's going to be stronger. It's going to be more glorious. It's going to be better than ever. We're going to make our country better than ever. Our mission must start with restoring safety to America, one of the most disturbing lies out of Crooked Joe's mouth. In our debate last night was when he denied, and he denied. He denied anything having to do with the border. Anything having to do with the border. He said the border is such a lovely place, letting massive terrorists, numbers of terrorists pour into our country. Just two days ago, news reports revealed that while Biden was taking his 10-day rest, and study period. It was a rest and study. Where is he going to be? I love Camp David, by the way. I didn't think I'm not a rustic person. I don't love rustic look, but I loved it. You had to see this place. I started to love it. Very seductive. You go up these log cabins. They're so beautiful. The best. And I'd see FDR pictures of FDR and pictures of other the great presidents. And it was so historic and so incredible. But uh, I'm not sure he has any idea what the history is. He just likes a log cap and he wants to lock himself in. He wants to, he wants a place to sleep, okay? Just leave me alone. Leave me alone. I want to sleep. I'm studying for the debate. I want to sleep and study. That's all I'm going to do for 10 days while the world is going to hell. But uh, he had a study period at Camp David while more than 50 terrorists, 55 to be exact, were running into the United States after Biden allowed them to cross our wide open southern border. Crooked Joe has no idea where they are, what kind of slaughter they intend to commit, but you will bet anything. ISIS terrorists, 55 of them last week, ISIS terrorists, the worst in the world. By the way, I defeated ISIS, you know that. With General Kane, right? Raisin Kane, you know that story, Raisin Kane, he was great, great general, real general, not the television. We have a lot of television generals, they're no good. Like Billy. How about Billy? We had some, uh, like the dumbest of them all, General Kelly. He didn't know, he was lost in the White House. That poor guy didn't know what the hell was happening. He was like a lost, we used to call him a lost soul. Under the Trump administration, we will not rest until we have found every single radical Islamic terrorist who Joe Biden has let into America. We will arrest them or we will throw them the hell out of our country immediately and we will not let them back in. We have no choice. And already Biden's open border nightmare has stolen countless innocent lives. Yesterday in Houston, you read about this, 12-year-old Jocelyn Nunguri was laid to rest by her grieving mother, who I spoke to yesterday, a incredible woman, just devastated. Literally, I was going up to the debate, and I got the return call from the mother, and I talked to her, and they're screaming at me, sir, you're going to the debate. You're going right now, sir. You know, and I'm on the phone, and I said, I can't, I might be late, but that's okay. But I said, I will. I did talk to her, and then I said, I'll speak to you, and I'm going to call her today or tomorrow. A devastated person. She was a devastated person, but uh, her precious daughter became yet another victim of the Biden migrant crime. People that would have never come in here. In fact, a lot of these people that you're reading about, we threw them out. They were gone and they came back under Biden. Last week, John was 
savagely tied up, viciously assaulted and brutally murdered by two Biden migrants who Crooked Joe released into the United States to prey on our women and girls. One of these monsters waited just 20 days before ending Jocelyn's beautiful American life. Crooked Joe proved last night he has no regret, no remorse, knew, had, had no idea who she was, no empathy and no compassion for all the innocent victims whose lives have been just absolutely destroyed. And you look at uh, so many of the other young people that you're hearing about, so many of them are young, 13, 12, raped and killed, 13 years old, 12 years old, raped and killed. And remember this, I say this a lot, this is just starting because they're just getting comfortable in the country. They never heard about uh, politically correct law enforcement. We have the greatest police in the world, but they're not allowed to do their job. And we're going to let them do their job. And we're going to give them immunity so they can't be prosecuted for doing their job. Joe Biden inherited a great border because I fixed it. Remember, I fixed it in 2016. I got elected because of the border. But that border was nothing compared to what we have. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. But I fixed it. It was a big deal. And I would say it was probably one or two in terms of my points that I had a lot of things. But the border was a big deal. It was a bad border. I fixed it so much so that I couldn't even speak about it during the 2020 race because it didn't. Nobody cared about it anymore because it was fixed. So he inherited a perfect border and he proceeded to destroy it almost immediately. He destroyed it at a level that nobody could even believe, but many times worse than it was in 2016. I'd love, you know, I have a chart. I don't know if these guys don't know about this, but I have a chart that if they could find it, put it up because there's one little stat on this chart. Oh, wow. These guys have become good. You know, it used to take a day to get that chart. They'd say, sir, we'll have it up tomorrow. I said, tomorrow's not going to help me, Glenn. So you see the arrow, Glenn, on the bottom. See the arrow, the big red arrow on the bottom. That's the lowest level of illegal immigration ever in recorded history right there. That's the week that I left office. And look what happened after that. Look at the numbers on the right. Look at what happened after that. So that was the lowest level. And then it started marching upward. But what you don't see are the drugs were at the lowest level in 32 years. The human trafficking, mostly in women, they traffic in women. And that's now back at a level that we've never even seen or imagined before. But I love that chart. You know, that chart is just a small chart in with other numbers like poll numbers and things that are so impressive, even fundraising. You know, we did more. We raised more money after this crooked trial than we've ever raised, I think, than any candidate. I think we raised over $400 million. Can you believe it? I would say if we did $10 million, it would be a lot during this period. $10 million is a lot of money. They raised over $400 million uh, during this very short period of time, a little period of time. If we would have done like eight or nine or 10, it would have been great. But they did numbers that no, because everyone knows they're a bunch of crooked people. These are crooked people using justice to try and win an election. But I'm proud of that chart. It was in with other things that are very important. But there's something about the importance of this that I really thought I we could show it. And sometimes we'll take it out, show it to some of these big crowds. When I return to the White House, we will stop the plunder, rape, slaughter, and destruction of American suburbs, cities, and towns. And for the suburban women who I actually think vote for me, I think that's, you know, they say. They say the suburban women. What do you like? You saw Biden. You like Biden? Yeah. The suburban women. You know why they like me? Because I'm going to keep them safe. I'm going to keep them safe. We're going to keep them safe. And I think it's uh, I think it's fake. I think we do great with suburban women, but I always read, he's trying to get the suburban women. No, I think they like me because I'm going to keep them safe militarily and also from the standpoint of borders and everything else. We will shut down deadly sanctuary cities. I will shift massive portions of federal law enforcement to immigration enforcement. And on day one, we will begin the largest domestic deportation operation in the history of our country. And we have no choice. I have no choice. 
And as we discussed last night with Crooked Joe, the Biden border invasion has also been a disaster. And I say it and I'll say it again for the African-American, Hispanic-American communities more than anybody else. Virtually all of the net jobs created have gone to Biden migrants. Who would think that? I, I heard that a week ago. I said, you got to give me that stat. Almost every job. Did you know that? I, I can't, it's hard to believe, actually. Almost every new job has gone to illegal immigrants. Joe Biden wants to be the president for illegal aliens. And I want to be the president for Americans of every background, every walk of life, every race, religion, color and creed. And remember, Joe Biden used the term super predators. He used it for 10 years. He used it more than anybody else. That's not a man that likes black people. I will tell you, that's not a man. Super predator. Ask him about it. I brought it up last night. He went, oh, super predator. Ask him. And honestly, only black people know what that term represents. 1990s, Joe Biden, super predator for 10 years. Every day, more African-Americans and Hispanic-Americans are joining our movement. And that's one of the major reasons that we're going to win the Commonwealth of Virginia this fall. And our case to Virginia is very simple. We will seal the border. We will make the American dream affordable again. But we will bring back the American dream, something you don't hear about anymore. You're going to have the American dream back. Working with your great governor, Glenn Youngkin, we will make Virginia greater than it has ever been before. <laughs> Under my leadership, we had the greatest economy in the history of the world. That was proven time and time again. During my term, we had gasoline down to $1.87 a gallon. And by the way, take a look at gasoline. It's going up rapidly. Do you see what's going on? That's going up. And by the end, the 30-year mortgage, think of this, was 2.6%. It was 2.6% interest. And you know what it is now? It's 10%, but you can't get the money. So the American dream of owning a house is impossible. When I left office, inflation was almost nothing. How about this guy going around saying it was 9%? No, it was 9% when he didn't enter. About 14 months after he got in, he had to go from almost nothing to 9%. But he had a period where he had what they call the Trump float. He had all the good things, including the bounce back jobs that they took. They said all these pandemic jobs, we said, close it down, do whatever you want. And then when it opens, they call bounce back jobs. And they bounce back to bigger than where it was before. He takes the credit for it. You don't take credit for a bounce back. Joe Biden accidentally admitted last night. Did you mean that, Joe? You mean you're... Now, Virginia families are being crushed by Crooked Joe. You can't afford groceries, rent a house, a car payment, or anything else. I think your real rate of inflation, by the way, they say 24, 25%. I think if you really add the right items and you include interest where you can't get a mortgage, but if you do, you're going to pay much more than 10%. I think your rate of, I think your rate of inflation is 35 to 50%, and that's killing this country. It's a country buster. It's a family buster. It's busting up everything. We have the highest inflation, in my opinion, in the history of our country. In fact, Biden didn't have inflation for the first. So he didn't have it for many, many months because I gave him something that was beautiful. I gave him a clean, beautiful border. All he had to do is leave Tom Holman and leave these great people. You know, Brandon Judd, great. Oh, and he had a news conference today because Biden used his, Biden last night used his name in vain. He said, I never supported Biden and I never would. He said, I support Trump. I don't support Biden. He has no support. He doesn't have support from one police group anywhere in the country. He's frankly, he's a defunder. If you want to know, defund the police. That's another brilliant policy that they have. And then like a nightmare, it all began. But on day one of my new administration, we will throw out Bidenomics and we will replace it. We are going to replace it with Maganomics. We have Maganomics. Maganomics. To stop Bidenflation, 
I will end Joe Biden's colossal waste of American taxpayer dollars, and I will rapidly terminate a thing called the Green News Scam. It's the greatest scam in the history of our country. We're spending trillions and trillions of dollars on nonsense, on things that all they do is cause waste and inflation. I will repeal every disastrous Biden regulation. He's adding them back as fast as he can, killing our jobs. Cancel Crooked Joe's insane electrical. Think of it, the electric vehicle mandate. It's called the EV mandate. And we will do something like we've never done it before, although we did it pretty good five years ago. You know, we were five years ago, we were totally non-reliant on oil and gas from other countries. We were going to soon be energy dominant. We were going to be energy. We we're going to be sending it out to Europe all over the world. Nobody had ever seen anything like it. And then this guy ended it. Then prices went up and he started saying, oh, let him drill, let him drill. But if this election went bad, our country is going to be destroyed. But they will go back to that policy on the day after it opens up. And you're not going to have, you're going to have electric bills that will be triple what they are now. Because when we get in, we're going to have a very simple phrase. We will drill, baby, drill. We're going to drill, baby, drill. Think of it. Four years ago, we were energy independent. Now we're begging Venezuela, one of the safest places on earth. It's true. Though their crime rate is down to the lowest that they've ever had. Their crime rate is down 72% because they've taken all of their criminals, they've taken all of their prisoners, they've taken all of their drug lords, drug dealers, They've taken all of their gang members and brought them to the United States of America. Congratulations. Congratulations, everybody. And they brought them in. So their crime rate is, what do you have here? The crime is down 72%. They've taken their criminals and they deposited. And then they just got up two weeks ago and said, under no circumstances will we take any of them back. So here's what we're going to do. Next year, we're all going to meet as a group. And if this guy, it's not even conceivable that he's in. I hate to even want to suggest it. Let's say in a few months we'll do this. We're going to meet again. We're going to meet in Venezuela because it's the safest place on earth. You know, in Caracas, a year ago, two years ago, you had no chance of walking across the street if you were a woman without being accosted, beat up, shot, knifed to death. Now it's a very safe city because they've moved everybody into the United States of America. How stupid are we? How stupid are we? And their crime rates are down. And all over the world, prison population, the prison populations are down. And the fake news, look at them all over back there. The fake news doesn't want to talk about it. They say Donald Trump has a conspiracy theory. It's a conspiracy. No, it's not conspiracy. And by the way, if dictators as i call them most of them are dictators but they go under the term president but i know them all very well i would have been doing better than them i would have had a hundred percent over in this country by now they're emptying their prisons you know what that is they're emptying their mental institutions into our country do you know the money they save the money is massive and we have all the problems nothing good is going to come out and we have isis terrorists we have terrorists pouring into our country just bad bad things are going to happen and it's all because of this incompetent president the worst president in history if he gets back in joe biden has also vowed to pulverize virginia families with the largest tax hikes in history congratulations he pledged that the trump tax cuts are quote going to expire and if i'm elected it's going to stay expired that means he's going to raise your taxes by four times it'll be the largest you know that Lynn. he wants to give you the largest tax increase in the history of our country it's going to decimate virginia and it's going to decimate every state and it's not his fault you'll have to take the heat maybe that's what they're doing you'll have to take the heat but they want to decimate because those tax cuts went more to the middle class and the lower class than to anybody else and the creation of jobs. But instead of a Biden tax increase, I will deliver a, a Trump and call it a Trump middle class tax cut. And all of my life, I said it last night, I've watched as politicians cut taxes. This guy wants to raise your taxes by four times and people say, oh, let's vote for him. I don't know. They don't use the term liberal anymore. They use the term progressive, you know, because it's a nice sounding word. I'm a progressive.
but it's not a good word. It's a really bad word. And we will have a brand new Trump economic boom. We're going to cut taxes. So we cut taxes substantially, massively, the biggest tax. And with a lower rate, we did much more business, much more revenue than we had before the cuts. In other words, we just did better. And Apple and Microsoft, all these companies were bringing their money back from offshore countries, from other countries who were bringing it back into the United States because they essentially weren't allowed to from a practical standpoint because the tax was so high and the bureaucracy of doing it was almost impossible, they say. So we're going to do more tax cutting and we're going to have this country at a level that you've never seen it before. And we're going to, you know, under underfoot, under the ground, we have more liquid gold, oil and gas than any country on earth. And, you know, we had a thing called Anwar in Alaska. Ronald Reagan wanted to get it approved. He couldn't do it. Everybody wanted to get it approved. I got it approved. The first week of Biden, they disapproved it. The greatest tax, the greatest reserves, they say, outside of perhaps Saudi Arabia could be greater than Saudi Arabia. Would have been so great for Alaska, but would have been great for this country. Massive, massive oil reserves. And they turned it down. These people are horrible. I've announced that as part of those tax cuts. I will eliminate all taxes on tips. A very simple statement. No taxes on tips. I got that idea the other night. I'm in Las Vegas at my place, which is a very nice place, having dinner with some people, big people, successful people, talking about the future of the country, and they're very worried about it. And the waitress came over. I said, how are you doing? Been there for a long time. And she said, they're killing me on tips. I said, really? They go after He said, you have no idea. They just issued new regulations that make it impossible for us to live. And I was actually surprised to hear it. No taxes on tips. And when I announced that last week, you know, my phone's lit up. I never saw anything. Like that. that was the that was a very popular thing to announce. But it's a good thing. You earn the money. You keep the money. Every time you leave a tip for the next five months, make sure to write on the receipt, vote for Trump for no taxes on tips. It's no wonder Joe Biden and his thugs are so desperate to stop us. They're the ones who can stop them. A great thing just happened a few hours ago. You probably heard about it, but maybe you didn't because some of you have been standing in line for three days. Do you know that? These people, right, they've been online for three days to get into your place, Glenn. This is crazy. You must have heard that Glenn is going to be here with a superstar son. We do, right? Don't we? I think he's great. Doing great. But just this happened a few hours ago. The Supreme Court ruled that Biden's Department of Injustice has wrongly prosecuted hundreds of Americans for peacefully protesting on January 6th. people have been treated so badly, especially when you compare them with people that ripped apart and killed people in Portland and in Seattle and in other places. They have been treated so badly. So we're asking, based on the decision, they should immediately be released, immediately the J6 hostages. people, whether it's the thugs in Portland, the thugs of Seattle, the thugs of Minneapolis. How about Minneapolis? It was burning down. Remember the guy from CNN? Although I shouldn't knock CNN because I actually thought they treated me very fairly last night. Very professional. Both of them, Jake and Dana, they treated us very fairly. I, they abused me for years, but last night, Right? What happened? They treated me very fairly. I think it's great. I think it was great for them. It was great for CNN, but I thought they were very fair. But all of those thugs, and then you take the monument-wrecking thugs of Washington, D.C. Remember, they came into Washington, and, you know, you thought maybe there was a little bit of a racial anger. 
But then they wanted to take down the statue of Abraham Lincoln. I'm saying, what's this all about? But they only wanted to do things until I got tough with them and imposed a 10-year jail sentence on anyone for so much as touching any one of our magnificent monuments. And it was amazing to watch them flee the city. They fled. They fled the city very rapidly from that moment on. You know, I brought out an old law that had been done in the early 1900s. And it said that if you touch a statue, you get a maximum fine of 10 years in jail. And you can't do anything about it. It's 10 years in jail. And that's it. So I reinstated that law. You could never have a law like that passed today because it's too tough. They don't do things. Until the country's really in trouble, they won't do things. But I took it out. I reenacted it. And as soon as I did, in other words, 10 years in jail, if you get caught doing anything to one of our beautiful monuments or statues, they fled Washington. It was a beautiful sight. I watched them go up. Look at them go. Look at them go. No, because it's what they understand. But based on the Supreme Court, the great Supreme Court, we put three incredible justices on. They had, I understand, another three. And they did the right thing. Free the J6 hostages now. They should free them now for what they've gone through. They've been waiting for this decision for a long time. They've been waiting for a long time. And that was a great answer. That was a great thing for people that have been so horribly treated. So many of these people were told to go in, right? The police, go in, go in, go in. What's going on? And they put them in jail for years and years. All of their persecution is only happening, and all of it has happened to me because I'm running for president and leading very substantially in all of the polls, every single poll we're leading in every state. We're even leading in the state, or as you would say, the Commonwealth of Virginia. No, we're leading in the Commonwealth. And I'm glad I corrected that, right? If I didn't correct it. Well, they'll put it on tonight. They'll have it cut just prior to They'll cut it just prior to Now, the Commonwealth is great, but we're leading, and it could be a very substantial lead, but we have one poll with two up, another one with three up, another one with four up, one we're even, but that was a very Democrat poll. I don't believe that. But we're going to make Virginia greater than ever before. I hope you get out and do this, because these people are destroying our country. As you saw last night, it's all coming straight from Crooked Joe himself, because he thinks it's the only way that he can win all of this persecution of the of people. It's all coming from Joe Biden and his thugs, because I'm not even sure he knows what the hell's going on. But he's surrounded by vicious thugs. He's surrounded by fascists and communists. But since the show trial in New York, my poll numbers have increased so substantially, nobody's seen anything like it. And I think last night, last night will not detract from that. And fundraising, as I said, is at an all-time high. The radical left Democrats rigged the presidential election in 200. Think of this. They rigged the election in 2020 like nobody's ever seen before. And we're not going to allow them to rig the presidential election in 2024. We're not going to allow it to happen. And every time the radical left Democrats, Marxists, communists, and fascists, every time they indict me, I consider it a great badge of honor because I'm being indicted for you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Never forget our enemies want to take away my freedom because I will never let them take away your freedom. They want to silence me because I will never let them silence you. And in the end, they're not after me. They're after you. I just happen to be standing in their way, and I always will. So we're thrilled to be joined today by many outstanding Virginia patriots, great people, including the next senator from the Commonwealth of Virginia, Hung Cow. He's going to be, I think he's going to be great. You're going to win. What do you think? Is he going to win, Glenn? You're going to help him? We got to help him. Hey, Glenn, should we have him come up for a second? Come on up. We got to get him to win. 
because his, let me tell you, his opponent is terrible. He's a para, he's just terrible. Hung is a graduate of the U.S. Naval Academy and he served with special operations in Iraq, Afghanistan, and Somalia. He was one of the most brave guys. They talk about it. He's become a legend and that's why he's running. And now he's running to fight for the hardworking people of Virginia. Hung Cow will vote to secure our borders, stop Joe Biden's inflation nightmare and crack down on violent crime. He will vote for low taxes, low regulations and low energy prices. And he is a warrior. He'll support our police and our veterans. And most importantly, Hung Cow will defeat a terrible senator, a man who's got very little respect in Washington, D.C., his name is Tim Kaine. Nobody respects him. They call him a walking man. They walk. He votes for anything Biden wants. He's got a 100% record of voting for Crooked Joe. Tim Kaine has voted repeatedly to continue Joe Biden's border invasion. I don't know how you people, this is killing you. And yet this guy votes all the time to keep it going. Tim Kaine. Let the people pour into our country, even if they're criminals, even if they're mental patients. He voted to protect deadly sanctuary cities. He voted for the largest proposed amnesty plan and tax plan in American history. He voted against Kate's law to think of that. Voted How do you vote against Kate's law? And he voted to terminate Title 42. He voted to give illegal aliens tax funded benefits, the likes of which nobody has ever seen, including our great veterans. Virginia cannot afford six more years of Tim Kaine and his open borders agenda. Everybody's got to get out and vote for Hung Cow. I love this guy. He is really going to be great. Hung, say a few words. Mr. President, the only person better off today than they were four years ago is an illegal alien. We're going to fight for America. We're going to put Americans first, like we always have, with your leadership, sir. Telling you, he's going to win, man. That guy has a—he's got a serious handshake. Well, I'm sorry, but I think my hand may be broken. He's got a—he's a tough cookie. That's a serious handshake you have. Thank you. You're going to win. You're going to win. A lot of people are going to win that nobody's thinking of. And, uh, you know, it's uh, it's amazing what's happening. What's happening is really amazing. But this is a guy who's going to win and he's going to you're going to be proud of him for many, many years. We're also grateful to be joined by the governor of this magnificent Commonwealth. His name happens to be Glenn Youngkin, and he's one of the greatest governors in the country. And I know he just spoke, but I'd love to have him come up and say a few additional words. Thank you very much. Trump rally that you have ever had, and you're doing it in Virginia. And yes, on behalf of 8.7 million Virginians, Mr. President, we are going to go to work and get you back in the White House. He's a great governor doing an incredible job, and we appreciate it. He's also a tall governor, very tall governor. The only one I know taller is my son, Barrett. That kid is tall, and he's a good boy, and he sees this country, and he, it distresses him when he sees what's happening at a young age. People understand. Smart people understand. But I want to thank the governor for the great job he's done in the commonwealth it's done an incredible job and everybody everybody's talking about it too thanks as well to virginia attorney general jason mears 
Jason Mears. Where's Jason? Come on, Jason, let's go. What the hell is a Friday? Come on. Come on, Jason. I hear great things. All I know is Glenn tells me he's doing a great job as attorney general. I don't have to hear anymore. That's the one that matters. Come on, Jason. Well, I first says the attorney general is a top law enforcement official in the Commonwealth. I have to say, Mr. President, after seeing last night's debate, I instructed my adult abuse investigators to investigate the DNC for forcing Joe Biden to run for president. But when we talk about what's at stake at this election, it's three simple initials. U.S.A. Attorney General. Is everybody having a good time? So one of the great congressmen, a person who knows more about our military, I think, than maybe anybody, he's from a wonderful state known as Florida, and he's highly respected by everybody he knows, just a real professional, and he hates seeing what he's seeing because he sees our country a nation in decline is what he sees, and it's very sad to watch, but we're going to turn it around. Congressman Michael Waltz. Thank you, Michael. Great job. And Michael would agree that Congresswoman Jen Kiggins is a fantastic talent, a fantastic woman. Where is she? She is doing a great job. Thank you very much, Jen. Thank you. Great job. Everyone tells me, look, Secret Service won't let her up. Secret Service. They're tough. They don't play games. Thank you very much, Jen. We appreciate it. Thank you. A man who was treated very unfairly by the thugs, the same thugs that we're going to dethrone, like a deranged Jack Smith. He's a deranged person. How's he doing? I don't think he's doing so well. He's a deranged person. But he gave a man named Bob McDonald, your former governor, he gave him a very unfair, they all did, they gave him a very unfair treatment. But Bob has done incredibly well. He went through it, and he's a great guy. Former governor, Bob McDonald. Thank you very much. The deranged one we have. You're not a fan, you're not a fan of those guys. <laughs> and now Bob, uh, Bob showed them for what they are, former governor and a really wonderful senator and a good guy and a friend of mine, George Allen. George, thank you. Thank you, George. I knew his father very well, and his father was a great coach. He was really a good coach. He was, uh, he knew how to win, right? He knew how to win. Former governor, Jim Gilmore. Jim, thank you. Thank you, Jim. Congressional nominees, Lori Buckout. Lori, thank you. Good luck. Oh, you're going to do well. You're scheduled to win. They have you down. Another one scheduled to win, Derek Anderson. Good. You're going to do great. We're going to get it. He's running against one of the Vindman twins. Vindman, is that correct? The Vindman twins, these are the worst people. You got to win that race, Derek. They, they are the worst people. They reported a false conversation. They made up a story about a certain conversation that was false. And they act like they're hot stuff. They're not. All they have to do is look in the mirror and they'll realize. And look at this guy. He's like a movie star, right? Look at this guy. No, the brothers, they're twins. And I heard one is worse than the other. I think you're running against the worst one. We're going to fight for you. You got to win that race. You got to teach the Vindmans. We got to get them out. And another man who started a little bit down to somebody. I won't mention his name. I will not mention his name. Bob Good. I won't mention his name. And Bob Good was terrible to me for three years. And I used to say, who is this guy? 
And then for the last six months, he was great. But I couldn't forget the three years, so I had to make a decision. And we had a man named John McGuire, who was a Navy SEAL. And, you know, I know a lot of tough guys, and they wanted to be Navy SEALs. It was their dream to be a Navy SEAL. That's all they thought about. And in many cases, like sons of friends of mine, they want to be a Navy SEAL. They couldn't get there. It's a very tough thing to do. It's really tough. Guys are the perfect physical specimens, everything great. And they couldn't do it. They couldn't do it. And this guy is a full-fledged Navy SEAL at the highest level. And he beat, he's beat an opponent who was a, a leader, a big leader in the House, Republican leader. And uh, Bob McGuire, you're going to have a great race. You're going to win. And you are a hero. Thank you very much. That was amazing. That was amazing. It was an honor to endorse him. You know, he, he started off, not a lot of people knew him. I endorsed him, and he went up 27 points. And he ended up winning by, like, doesn't matter, a few hundred votes. We'll take it. Doesn't matter. Two votes is okay, too. Uh, what a great campaign you ran. Congratulations. He's a Navy SEAL. Thank you very much, John. John McGuire, everybody. And also a man who's a tough cookie, and he's doing a great job. Virginia GOP chair, Rich Anderson. He says we're going to win. Rich, thank you. Are we going to win, right? We got to win. Oh, by the way, we win Virginia, the race is over. You understand that. So, I don't want any, I don't want to put any pressure on Randy and on Glenn and on everybody else, but we win Virginia, you know, it's over. It's over. I saw that today. They said if he wins Virginia on top of everything else, it's over. And former congressman, good guy, Randy Forbes. Randy. Thank you. Thank you. You look good. Thank you, Randy. Above all, because we are near so many military facilities, I want to salute every single U.S. service member and veteran in the audience today. We have the highest, we have the highest rating with the veterans of any president. Thank you. So let's have a big round of applause for the men and women of the United States Armed Forces. Under the Trump administration, we fully rebuilt the U.S. military and we created Space Force. We totally defeated the ISIS territorial caliphate 100 percent. We did it in four weeks. They said it was going to take five years. We extinguished the founder and leader of ISIS, al-Baghdadi. We terminated the worst top terrorist, Qasem Soleimani. These are the two top terrorists in the world. We left Iran weak and broke and begging to make a deal. They wanted to make a deal so badly. We would have made a deal. We would have made a good deal for them. But then we had the rigged election, and now we have an incompetent president. We stood with our friends and ally in the state of Israel. We recognized Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. And we recognized Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights, something they were trying to do for 70 years. And with the Abraham Accords, we made peace in the Middle East at a level that nobody has ever seen, the Abraham Accords. We had Russia, China, and North Korea in check, and I was the first president in decades who started no new wars. Instead, I brought our troops back home. We brought them all back home. If I was president, the war in Ukraine would never have happened. The October 7th attack on Israel would never have happened. The Russian nuclear submarines would not be circling Cuba 60 miles off our Miami coast. Think of it. We have, we have Russian submarines circling Cuba, and the fake news media doesn't want to talk about it. If you were president, they'd be calling for your indictment. If Bob was president, but you could handle it, you've proven that. If anybody was president that was a Republican, they don't even talk about it. Think of it. We have Russian submarines and Russian warships in Cuba. And Cuba's right next to Miami, in case you don't know. Can you imagine? And the fake news media, those people right there with all those cameras, they don't want to talk about it. For our great veterans, we passed VA accountability and VA choice. Two things they said were impossible to get passed. And while Joe Biden pretends to be a defender of veterans, Crooked Joe has tried to rehire the sadists who mistreated our great. You know, we fired 
9,000 people out of the VA because they were sadistic, they were sadists, they were hurting our veterans, they were thieves, they were crooks, they were bullies. We fired 9,000. Biden now wants to hire them all back. He's trying to reinstate 5,000 poorly performing VA poor. These are all people that I fired, VA employees that I fired, and give them back full pay. We fired them because they were sadists and they were bullies and they were hurting people that weren't in prime time. It'll cost us $200 million in back pay. This is what he wants. He wants to put the thugs back into the VA. And people are not happy. On day one of my new administration, I will fully restore the use of VA accountability and direct my Secretary of Veterans Affairs. And by the way, all this stuff passed Congress. I got to pass Congress wasn't just an executive order. And direct my Secretary of Veterans Affairs, my last one did a great job, to fire every corrupt abuser of our veterans who Joe Biden wants to keep on the payroll, wants to have them back. As Commander-in-Chief, I will defend our military, I will always honor our veterans, and I will restore peace through strength. Before I even arrive at the Oval Office, shortly after we win the presidency, we, we win the presidency, I will have the horrible war between Russia and Ukraine totally settled. I know a good guy who could settle it. That guy right there, Glenn. He was settled. Uh, he did he did some pretty tough deals. He, did some, he have good experience for settling. Yesterday's debate should make it clearer than ever how important it is to elect a competent president who will prevent World War III. I'm the only one that can say it. I know every one of those players and they respect us. In my next term, we will build a great iron dome over our country, a dome the likes of which no one has ever seen before, a state-of-the-art missile defense shield that will be entirely built and made in the USA. And largely, and largely in the Commonwealth of Virginia, a lot of, a lot of it is expected to be done right here in Virginia. You know, Israel has a dome, but we have technology. Ronald Reagan wanted it to happen years ago, but we didn't have the technology in all fairness then, but he wanted it. But now we have incredible technology. As you know, 300 missiles were recently shot at Israel and 299 were knocked down and one was basically disabled. So they hurt, they stopped 300 missiles from going into Israel. And we were going to have a better dome a more technologically capable dome and we're going to build a great dome over this country because we deserve it we deserve it despite joe biden's flagrant lies on the debate stage i will not cut one penny from social security or medicare which is what he is going to do he's destroying social security i kept that promise for four straight years and i'll keep it again remember i didn't increase i didn't do you know they talk about russia Russia, under Bush, took land. Russia, under Obama, took land. Russia, under Biden, is going to take the whole thing, it looks like. Russia, under Trump, took nothing. They took nothing. It's true. It's true. Pinocchio Joe lied about all the things that I did to... Preserve Social Security. I'm preserving. He's going to destroy Social Security by allowing all of these people in and using it. Remember that, Congressman. You got to stop him. And even his lies about now the inexpensive insulin. So I was the one that got you the inexpensive, not him. That was done three years ago. And the sad thing, it came due two years later. And I said, You mean if I lose this race? That was at the time. The new president's going to get credit. And he goes around talking about how he did insulin. I did the insulin. Where the seniors get insulin at a very low price. By contrast, Joe Biden has cut Medicare Advantage payments for two straight years. A total betrayal to our seniors. Biden has cut Advantage payments. We're going to rebuild our cities into beacons of hope, safety, and beauty better than they have ever been before. We will take our horribly run capital of our nation in Washington, D.C., and clean it up, renovate it, and rebuild a capital the likes of which that we haven't seen in its prime. We will get rid of the murder and the crime. 
you go f- to from Virginia to take a tour of the Capitol, look at the great monuments and all, you end up getting shot, mugged, knifed. We're going to clean it up and we're going to get rid of all the crime. There's not going to be any crime. On day one, I will sign a new executive order to cut federal funding for any school pushing critical race theory, transgender insanity, and any other inappropriate racial, sexual, or political content onto the shoulders of our children. And I will not give one penny to any school that has a vaccine mandate or a mask mandate. And I will keep men out of women's sports and fully uphold, of course, the totally under siege Second Amendment. We will protect innocent life and we will restore free speech and I will secure our elections like never before. Our elections will be one day voting with paper ballots, proof of citizenship and voter ID. Very simple. But until then, Republicans must win. We're going to count on Virginia more than just about any place else. We're so close. This would be an incredible historic victory. We want a landslide that's, and remember this term, too big to rig. We want a landslide that's too big to rig. If it's too big to rig, if it's too big, they can't rig it. They're going to try. They're bad. They have no shame. If you took the 10 worst presidents in the history of the United States, and ended it up, they would not have done the near, think of it, they wouldn't have done near the destruction to our country as Joe Biden and the Biden administration has done. So if you want to save America, go out, get your family, get your friends, get everyone you know and vote. Vote early, vote absentee, vote on election day. But whatever you do, you have to go out and vote. You have to vote. And if you want us to help ensure election integrity, sign up to protect the vote. It's very simple. Get out and help us. Protectthevote.com. Very simple. Protect. Because we don't need votes. We need protection of the votes once they're cast. Because these people will do anything to stay in power. So protectthevote.com. Help us protect the vote. We're going to protect it. And we have... Law enforcement, every law enforcement agency in Virginia and every other place has endorsed us. They're going to all be watching. From Fredericksburg to Williamsburg, from Alexandria to Norfolk, and from Roanoke to Richmond, to right here in Chesapeake, Virginia. It's been the home of some of the greatest American heroes ever to walk the face of the earth. This is the place where George Washington led the patriots of the Continental Army to victory at Yorktown. What a history you have. Virginia was the home of Thomas Jefferson, who wrote those immortal words, all men are created equal. And Virginia gave us James Madison, James Monroe, Lewis and Clark, Booker T. Washington, Ella Fitzgerald, the Bedford boys who gave their lives on D-Day, And Patrick Henry, who declared, give me liberty or give me death. Pretty good. That's a pretty good history. That's not bad. You know, I stop at a lot of states. They don't quite have a lot of that. Right, Governor? Together, they help build America into the greatest and most exceptional nation in the history of the world. But now we are a nation that is in serious decline. We are a failing nation very sad thing to say. We are a nation that has lost its confidence, willpower, and strength. We are a nation that has, quite honestly, lost its way. But we are not going to allow this horror to continue. Less than four years ago, we were a great nation, and we will soon be a great nation again. With the right leadership, every disaster Joe Biden has created can be fixed and can be fixed really very, very quickly, and we will get it done fast. Every problem can be solved, and every wrong can be rectified. By this time next year, America borders will be strong, sealed, and secure. Inflation will be in full retreat. Our economy will be roaring back. Optimism will be surging. The American dream will be thriving again for citizens of every race, religion, color, and creed. 
law and justice will reign all throughout our land. Freedom will be restored. The flame of liberty will be burning bright. Joe Biden, the worst president in the history of our country, will be a fading memory of the past. And our great silent majority, including the once forgotten men and women of our country, will be the one shaping America's magnificent future when I am the 47th president of the United States. Because we are all Americans, and together we will show November 5th to be the most important day in the history of America. We are one movement, one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. And together, we will make America powerful again. We will make America wealthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America proud again. We will make America safe again. We will make America free again. And we will make America great again. Thank you very much, Virginia. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you very much.